there! Welcome to the second part of this video. Last time we did a real-time drawing session and we drew a sketch inside my new Koval sketchbook. It is a handmade sketchbook that is filled with Fabriano Artistico cotton paper that's 300 GSM and CP, which means cold pressed. It has slight texture and that's what we are going to paint in today. This is the sketch. If you watched my previous almost 40 minute long video, you might even have sketched this with me. If you were looking for a reference photo, that one that was my inspiration for this drawing, you can find link down below. It is to my Pinterest board that's filled with inspirations that I like to use for drawing and painting. And today I would like to use my regular watercolors and paint this picture. I still consider this a sketch. I hope that it won't take me two hours to paint. Let's start. I'm gonna use these binder clips to, to fix the sketchbook, but I have a washi tape here. Usually I just use the regular masking tape and fix the entire thing so that the paper doesn't buckle much. This time I'm gonna just do this and on the other side as well, just so it doesn't move and then create a border. This washi tape is new, I don't use washi tape very often and it doesn't stick as well as like my regular masking tape does but it's nice and has these metallic dots but I'm not sure if it's worth it if it, if it doesn't do the job. <laughs> so I'm gonna use the washi tape to create a border around the entire picture and then also use these binder clips to fix fix it so it doesn't move much. I think I'm gonna do a background in this picture. A very loose one, but I still wanted to do some sort of background. And with that in mind, I wanna have a border here. I've got two more binder clips, so I'm gonna use them to fix the sides. I don't want the paper to buckle much and it should work. First stage of the painting process for me personally is always the color selection. There used to be a time when I improvised and I had a palette that was filled with all kinds of paints and I just reached for the one that I felt like using at that moment, but I don't do that anymore. Right now, what's working for me is to choose very limited selection of colors, only those that I'm going to use for a specific painting and then use that paint, squeeze them to the porcelain palette and then simply use those. I probably can't explain exactly why, what's behind this preference of mine, but I take it that if I don't see any other colors here that would distract me, I can stick to the original idea that I had for the colors. And so I try to pick the colors beforehand and then only stick to those that I picked. The only exception, if I reach for another paint that I did not select beforehand, is when I feel like the painting is really missing something and then I have to re-evaluate that color selection in the middle of the process. So what I do is to choose a few tubes from my selection of colors and today for this painting, looking at the reference photo, I chose two new paints that I've got by Daniel Smith. This is iridescent Aztec gold and iridescent sandstone. Uh, one is lighter and the other one is stronger, a little more saturated iridescent paint with like metallic undertones. So those two I'm gonna use. It, it feels like a good fit for this particular motif. Then I chose two red colors. One is a softer, little colder red. This is a permanent Alizor and Crimson by Winsor & Newton. I'm going to use this to mix the skin tones. And then Pyrrole Red, which is a strong red I'm gonna use for the jewelry that she has and the color that she wears feels like a good fit. This picture really is, for me, about the pops of red. And I think that the Pyrrole Red is gonna be perfect for it. 
then this is weird i don't know if that's gonna work but i hope that it does this is quinacridone deep gold usually i use either raw sienna or quinacridone gold but this is a deeper tone and uh, i want to use it instead of the raw sienna even though it's darker because i think that it fits the skin tone i don't know if that's gonna work i can always add more water to make it slightly lighter what i'm getting from the reference photo is this kind of undertones the next two colors are black Bloodstone Genuine. This is granulating Daniel Smith color with warm undertones. I think I mentioned this one in a previous video, a recent one. I can't be sure which one it was. And this is neutral tint, just in case that I need to darken something and I don't want to change temperature of the color. Neutral tint should be used for darkening colors, but without changing whether they are cold or warm. And I picked two literally cool colors in the throne blue i don't know if i pronounced it right this is a, a lovely type of blue that i find a little more to the violet side and darker than ultramarine and this is some sort of turquoise by schminke so i'm just gonna use this if you want to paint this with me you can use the similar colors that you have on my palette that i chose you can just use a couple of reds that you find that could be similar to those that I have here. You can use any metallic, but you don't have to use metallic. You can use raw sienna instead of the one that I chose. Something dark would be handy because the girl has a dark hair and a dark background and something blue would be fine. If you use ultramarine blue, which is a very commonly used blue or I don't know, cobalt even could work instead of these two. It's just that these are the paints that I find from my collection most suitable. You don't really have to buy these to paint it. Just use what you have on the palette, something that is similar to those that I have. I, I'm not gonna do heavy mixing here, just most of the time I'm gonna use these colors in their raw state. I'm gonna mix the skin tones though. But for mixing skin tones, I already have a real-time video here on my YouTube channel and I will link it down below so you can find it. I'm not gonna do the entire mixing thing again because it was just a couple of months ago and I think it's just more or less what I do every time that I paint. So you can just find it and do these exercises. The video takes 15 minutes to teach you everything that's basically about how to mix skin tones or any other tone for that matter with watercolor you know watercolor is a tricky medium but mixing skin tones and mixing anything with watercolor is easier than when you have techniques that use white paint that's a little more tricky like gouache or oil or even acrylics let's start now usually i start with skin tones so i have a bowl here i buy this in ikea i did a studio vlog a couple of months ago and i showed you these when i bought them i have lots of these bowls and plates and and I mix colors in them and they, it's just working for me. This is nothing for traveling though. If you want to travel with watercolors, I had questions about that too. You would be best to do it with something like this case that's filled with dry watercolor pens. These are most suitable for traveling or doing watercolor when you move a lot. But in the studio, when you have everything at the ready, this setup just is what I normally use. I'm gonna put these uh, colors aside and then I'm gonna mention them again as I add them to the painting. Iridescent colors, I'm not gonna paint with these as quickly. Just gonna use them to embellish some of the details to the jewelry and the color, the clothes or so. But the skin tones, I'm gonna mix with the quinacridone deep gold. So I'm just gonna put a bit of the paint on the side, not to the bottom because that's when I want to mix like more to the side so that the mix can run down here is gonna be a pool of the mix color that I'm gonna paint with and then the Winston Newton permanent alizarin crimson I'm just gonna put it here next to the Queen deep gold and don't forget, when you're starting to paint with watercolor you need to have a tissue at hand always, always if something happens and you spill something, you don't have time to search for tissues. That can ruin your painting, but if you have it at hand, at the ready, then you can save the painting quite quickly. So these are the two paints in a bowl. Just gonna add water to them. I'm gonna make a pool of paint. They mix already.
and the first watercolor layers I definitely want to paint with a softer brush and my silver black velvet is just soft enough just gonna create a mix that I think suits that skin and here's the testing paper so this is a beautiful mix see that's what I'm talking about like if I do this quickly then it's gone if I searched for a tissue for like 20 seconds it would stay there what I wanted to say is that this is very transparent I need a little more pigment because the skin that I'm gonna paint it is not too pale maybe this is yellowish I'm gonna mix a little more yeah this works this could work don't forget to add enough water watercolor really needs to be worked with water so the first layer I quickly checked the face of the girl but there are no white spots that I should try to preserve like more the face is in the shadow the entire thing is in the shadow so I'll do a flat wash more or less with the, the mix that I made and that includes the neck without trying to put the brush into the water. I'm just going to remove some of the paint here and find places that might be a little more turned towards the light source. Like here, it might be a little lighter. And so here. Please try not to put clean water into the, the semi-dry wash that could disrupt the first wash. The wash is dry more or less now, for the most part. I'm gonna dry this and we'll continue building the layers up. I'm gonna get a smaller brush now and with the same mix I'm gonna try to paint shadowy areas here for instance and here take a look at the reference photo yeah. the paper is quite thirsty find these smaller shadowy areas I see some underneath the eyes probably going to keep the shadows rougher and with hard edges the cheek is a tricky area I might try to soften the edge now a little just to create a transition that's not as harsh as, as here and on the other side as well it's 
then ears they are in the shadow all together and then the mouth Alright, we forgot about the nose and there is a shadow over here Here I'm trying to remove the excess paint because there's light hitting this part and I'm getting sort of patchy a little bit. Here is a shadow underneath the mouth. of the nose also gets shadow and when you feel like everything is wet and the paper protests then you can just dry everything and then start painting darker shadows from from there I'm still working with the same mix that I used for the base. A little more paint to the cheeks. These cheeks, they are very, they are even more red than what you see now. can't quite grasp like how shadows distribute here on the nose but I think like here is the main area that needs to be darker and try to paint just simply what I see and how I see it we can always fix everything with colored pencils if we mess up and I don't want to have a messed up first page of the sketchbook any more than I'm sure that you don't want either but just for the peace of mind, I always tell myself that I always have pencils. If I mess it up, I'm just gonna use pencils to cover it up. That sometimes helps me to calm down a little when I paint and not stress out before it's finished. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit more of that alizarin crimson for the mouth because that's supposed to be more rosy. And now's the moment when I need to dry everything. The face isn't finished, but I would want to place all the colors to the picture so that we know what we are working with. And therefore, I'm gonna put this aside for a bit and i will do a wash of paint to cover the shirt and then i will do a wash of paint to cover the background and we'll finally start working with the values that we need because now i am comparing everything with the white paper and that doesn't give me any chance to fit the values the way they should and i need to fit everything together so it really helps you if you develop all parts of the picture like equally and do not try to do this part the small part of the painting to the highest possible finish before you color the background or deal with what's going on in here i prefer to do everything simultaneously more or less i would have much easier time trying to estimate what value should the shadows here be if i have the background painted so that's my plan 
So the next wash, I'm gonna use the Edethron Blue. Just a little bit of it, tiny bit of it, and the turquoise color. And I'm gonna create a wash. It's gonna be the shadow part that is on the shirt. It's gonna be more watery and I want to probably do this with a flat brush. It will cover the most part of the shirt. It's too blue and and it needs to be a little bit of the purple as well. Mix that with alizarin and crimson. That is too purple but I see purple color as a reflection inside that wash and turquoise reflection as well. Something like this should be in that shadow. I'm gonna have to mix colors as I go. I'm gonna try to do this with a flat brush. Shout out to Princeton brushes. I don't know if they are available in stores where you come from, in art stores. They are not available in Slovakian art stores, or at least I haven't seen them in my country yet, but I order stuff from Jackson's Art Supplies often, or from Amazon, if there is something that we can't get, because we have a very tiny market for watercolor stuff in Slovakia. I will send these Princeton brushes by the company just to test them out, and I did not stop using them. I really love this square wash three quarters of an inch is this one and it can hold a lot of water yet it retains the shape well and so you can do large washes very quickly and quite precisely so it's a handy watercolor brush in case that you don't know which one would work for you then I can recommend this one I'm gonna use water but here I see like a fold The shadow basically just envelops the entire shirt, but it gets more on the purple side in this area. Then more bluish and turquoise in this area. Here what I see is more or less a warm color. Could maybe use even just a little bit of that paint that we use for the face. And then here we also have these shapes that the shadow creates. It's going to be a wash. Like this. And also here I see purple undertones. That's basically it for the bottom layer. Here where I see the turquoise undertones, I see folds on that shirt. So we can work wet in wet to create these folds. That's too much pigment. Anywhere else? Maybe here. Here is a fold, a weird one I have to say. Then it's like the corals or the jewels are sitting inside the fold. And here also some of them. We don't want to be too precise, I'm just trying to paint loosely. Alright, works for me. While I'm on it, you can notice the shadow on her neck and I think that it would be handy to give it one layer of the paint that we used for the shirt because 
it just looks like that type of color on my reference. Shadows, they often are cold. You can use cool colors in a mix. I think that suits very well that part of the skin. I'm gonna now dry it before I do the background. And then I wanna place a wash of paint, still quite transparent to the hair and to the entire backdrop. The bottom layer for the shirt is done now and I'm going to place the first layer to the background and the hair. I want some granulation to show in the background, so I'm gonna use the Bloodstone Genuine. I purchased this paint in just a small tube, this is 5 milliliters, and I like it very much. I use it so frequently that I wouldn't even think that I'm gonna use it so frequently, because this is a specific color and the granulation is really heavy, but it just grew on me and I got it two months ago and I've used some of it up. These tubes, Daniel Smith, when you buy them, they are so overloaded with pigment. This is like a half of tube already used because it was so full, but I'm so glad that they are generous with the paint. And a bit of neutral tint just to darken things up. Neutral tint is not granulating, it's just it's smooth color. You're gonna prepare the color beforehand. Maybe I will want the paint to run a little. Let me test the mix. This is not what I had in mind. I need to use more of the Bloodstone Genuine in it to be darker, a little warmer. This starts to look like the thing that I envisioned. Maybe a little more. I only need to be careful around this area and then around the face. Really hope that the washi tape will hold. And I want the paint to run a little, so I have to. Not to the bottom, not anymore. This is just enough. I'm gonna get rid of the excess paint now. and a bit of the drips as well. Just want some abstractions. To form. So I'm just gonna use pools of paint and this is gonna be a real challenge for the sketchbook and for my binder clips and the washi tape mostly. Let's see if it can hold. This is pure bloodstone genuine that I want to bleed a little. And now I wasn't, because I didn't have time, I wasn't too precise like around the face. We can do this in another layer actually, we don't have to do this now. If you are worried that you're gonna smudge something because that's a real problem, you can wait and do this in another layer, but I'm just gonna try to do that now. And 
around the earrings that's gonna be most challenging. Maybe we'll have to mask this area later on. still feel like there's not enough abstractions <laughs> and if your sketchbook looks like this and is filled with these pools of water you have basically no other choice but to maybe get rid of the excess and then wait until it dries naturally if you want effects that's the best way to support the effects because if you try to force this with a hairdryer, the effect simply won't show as beautiful as if you let them dry naturally. That's just one thing that I've noticed. Every time that I try to force things with a hairdryer, some texture it will stay there, but it's not gonna look exactly how it does when I don't use hairdryer, when I let the washes just dry naturally. So I'm just gonna Keep it like this for a bit. I will get back and if I if I see all the water just gone and the effects there, the splatters and the watercolor blooms, then I'm gonna get a hairdryer and just finish the drying process. So it's just gonna be 15 minutes and then I'll continue. My painting is slowly turning out to be something different than the reference photo, but probably at least the colors will stay sort of true. What I want to do now is to color the hair, like the rest of the hair, with a bit of the darker paint. So the hair will now get the second layer. In some areas. It doesn't have to be too saturated. Be more or less. Just so we separate the hair from the background a little. It gets a little darker on this side than the other one. It also is darker in this part in here, and then little in here and I'm gonna put the darker pigment into the wet layer while it's still wet so that it can spread and create a softer transition. a lost edge we don't have to define everything
here I overdid it and went a little too far so I'm just gonna try to clean it up sort of reached the face with that wash and here also but the Fabriano paper should allow for some level of lifting and that helps me to correct mistakes a little but another concern that I have is that the eyes they need to be darker so I'm gonna try to darken them up right now Every time that I cover up the, the entire iris with paint, I keep in mind that the iris, it needs to be lighter in the bottom part. So I'm just gonna try to lift some of the pigment from this part of the iris to give the eye a little bit of the glossy and round shape. Usually that works to make the eyes look more alive. No painting details right now, just wanted to give a little bit of the like, darker shadow to that top part of the lid, the eyelid that creates some more shadow in that area of the face. While this is drying, I think it would be great if we finally start placing the blue and then the red to the page because I want all the colors to be present on the picture as soon as possible so I've already used up all the turquoise color I need to get another tube of this one this is Helio Turquoise by Schminke and I find it very helpful this paint it doesn't have the, the highest level of light fastness though I need to find something that's similar in hue yet it's more light fast yeah and i want to use the turquoise for some of these jewels like these pops of turquoise And then the blue that I have here, the Indian Throne blue. It's supposed to be here. Probably here as well. And these long ones, they have sort of a pattern, but I'm just gonna draw these Quickly, I'm not gonna try to be 100% precise. Don't have time for that. Just gonna improvise with this one. And then there is this one, the other side. And something similar is happening over here. There is like a pattern on this coral 
I'm just gonna do it preferably wet in wet so that it has some texture and I had a hint of turquoise going on in these earrings as well probably these were more like details and the bottom was red so this one But in a similar fashion, I'm gonna use the red ones, the red color. This time, however, I'm gonna get the pyro red. And I love the pyro red, it is such a rich, vibrant red. I'm always tempted to use it thicker than regular watercolor, especially if it's just screaming at me from a reference photo. But I don't want to smudge anything. I probably would be a great idea to use hair dryer for that layer. It is, some parts of the blue are still wet though and I'm just scared that I'm gonna make a mess. It's gonna last only a couple of seconds. So now a few parts of those jewels, they are very bright red color and I'm gonna attempt to paint that now this one Now I'm going to lift some of the paint so that the shape looks more round. You can do that on a fabric and a paper you should and you can do that even when the pigment is already dried and that lifting technique really does miracles to show a little bit of depth like this. Actually, if I'm gonna do the lifting technique, I need a brush that's more sturdy than silver black velvet, and that's the Princeton. The Princeton one usually does it a little better. It has sturdier bristles and it can lift the paint a little easier. We can now paint these. And I have to remember that I'm not painting jewelry, I am painting that human because I might just start painting jewel after jewel and then the painting session is never gonna end even though this is just a sketch, it was supposed to be a sketch. Just gonna flat paint them with the red color. I'm gonna worry about the depth later. But as I approach these areas that are blurring into the not so important bottom part of the picture, I'm adding more and more water because I want this basically to just disappear.
actually do a little splatters and um, yeah there's still a couple of these more or less red jewels that I'm just gonna paint quickly they're just like these parts in between I'm gonna probably use the the Aztec gold and the iridescent sandstone to just put some interest into that area. And there is another part that I need to paint with the red, and that's the color. But this one has a pattern. I have to figure out how to paint this so that it looks good, but isn't too detailed or anything. This will probably do the trick. There is more bright red in this part, so I'm just gonna let the red bleed into it and paint another side in a similar fashion. Here is a strong red that sort of bleeds outwards. a pattern of some sort and and then there is this one also has a pattern that I want to be very loose about otherwise this would be a nightmare a painting that would take ages to paint it's a bit of the purple violet and a bit of the blue And we're also red, more red in this area. Let it bleed. More purple. It's just basically covering this entire area. Just want to have this loose. It interferes with the drip that I did previously. I hope not too much. And then we have the iridescent paint. First I'm gonna use the lighter one, the iridescent sandstone, just a bit of it. Oh my gosh, that's what I'm talking about with Daniel Smith tubes. It is impossible when they are new to get just a small amount from the tube because it is so overflowing with pigment. Uh, so while the paint is still wet, I just want a bit of the like iridescent sandstone paint to bleed into the wash and that's for that color as well. Here too. Just to give it undertone that's slightly golden but doesn't scream too much. looks nice and we're gonna embellish the rest once it dries yeah I feel like the painting is more about the, all the folds and the clothes and the jewelry than about the face that actually is what attracted me to paint this photo now everything needs to dry before we move on to the next layer as I dried this layer what happens is that the iridescent paint now shows nicely the metallic undertones but I also get irritated by this masking tape or washi tape it doesn't really do its job anymore it didn't do it well before but now at all so I just want to get rid of it we're not gonna paint with too much water anymore I need to be fair it did the job more or less I'm just gonna remove it and even the removal is not gonna be enjoyable because this basically just is all gone now. I knew I didn't want to use washi tape even though it looks great. I like my very simple and unattractive masking tape. I'm just gonna stick with it because it does the job, it works for me.
now we need to finish the face finally we have all that we need for that and i need to paint the details i need to deepen the shadows and put some more red to the cheeks so let's start with the red layers i'm not gonna use pyrrol red for the face just alizarin crimson i still have a bit of it here and I need to get it very thick. For this, I need to get rid of these excess paints that I have inside my mixing bowl. And I'm only gonna use the alizarin crimson. And I'm gonna do a lot more red needs to go to the cheek. This is still quite a thin layer of paint. I'm going to soften the edge. Soften it here too. This girl, she really does have these beautiful red cheeks. I like the coloring of it, like how the face pops and now the nose. Okay, I don't really see the shadows the way I usually do on this photo. It's sort of weird for me. But usually I put pure alizarin crimson to the nose so that it can pop off the page and pop slightly to the front. And we'll add highlights later on and some shadows to, to make it more like three-dimensional. And then Lips also need a layer of pure alizarin crimson. I'm not gonna put red to her chin, but below the eyes there is also a place for it, for the redness. a little too much of the paint in this area right and where I can see more redness is here Just a little bit of red there I'll probably try to do some lifting of the pigment here because the bottom lip usually stays a little lighter since the light hits it more than the, the upper lip. And I feel like there's too much of harsh edge in this area, so I'm just going to try to soften it a little. Now I want to deal a little more with the eyes and I feel like the eyes they need a little more shadow in the eyeball itself in the inner part of the eyes it's not quite as white as you think so I'm just using very watered down neutral tint to paint shadow there a bit more of the shadow This part is supposed to stay quite light, but I covered this up with paint, so I'm just gonna try to fix it. And let's do the, the eyebrows with a thin brush and mostly neutral tint. That's on my brush now. More or less this is drawing, just with a tiny brush instead of a pencil. And 
with that advantage that you can soften the edge of the drawn line. You actually, you can do that with graphite as well, but now you can do it with water. So the line will be less harsh than when you make it with pencil. And with that neutral tint, I'm gonna try now to paint these shadows that are here in this part. She has shadows here, definitely. But I'll need to soften them, make them look natural if possible. And my next objection is gonna be the eyes themselves. I need to really make them darker because they still don't pop. There is not enough contrast yet. It is hard for me to focus and try to figure things out and comment at the same time so forgive me if I do something and I don't comment on it you can ask me in the comments down below if I forget anything and if you're watching a premiere of this video then you can ask me directly I'm usually there available in the live chat to answer all your questions or concerns if I can help with anything make anything more understandable just throw me a question down below and I'll try to answer as best as I can the face is so important sometimes it takes me two or three hours just to make it right even though I more or less had everything where it belongs but just like little tiny tweaks and constant comparing of the painting with the reference photo but my goal isn't to reproduce the reference photo as it is I use it only to see where the light and shadow is I can figure that out but I can't make up all the details and it really helps me If I was to paint without references, then I would probably just make the same face all over again. Because when you work with different reference photos, then you get constant variations. And you don't have to make them up, you have them there, you basically just study there. Okay, these need to be a little darker. And the lips, we still don't have the lips, they don't have as much contrast as they should have. The upper lip always, almost always needs to be darker. And then there is a shadow, in this case a very soft shadow below the bottom lip, so here. Since I have tiny brush here somewhere, I can do one more layer of shadow in this part because it really gets dark. When I look at the reference photo, then this entire part is very dark. So really deep shadow in here. But 
also this part needs a little more light that looks good to me some of the shadows will need to be on the clothes I'm gonna ignore them completely here is the folds or is it might be a drop shadow that those jewels cast It didn't quite stick. I tried to do these folds wet in wet to the first layer, but it didn't quite hold. So I tried to emphasize this. This is more or less just part of that layer that we already painted. Now I'm gonna dry it. One thing that seriously bothers me is the nose. I can't figure out how the light should go. There is a lot of shadow on this upper part of the nose, from what I can tell, from what I can see. I'm more used to painting the scenarios where the shadow goes like from the bottom. Oh, that looks weird, doesn't it? I think the shadow goes around this part here. Still looks weird. And underneath the nose there's a shadow that we didn't paint yet. But sometimes some shadows are better if we don't paint them at all. One last thing we still need to darken up is the hair around the face. Without it, here we don't have sufficient contrast, which is not good. Really want the face to pop a little more, and that's why I really, really need here a sharper edge and a darker part of the hair. So careful, negative painting technique, but that's how it should go. I feel like the shadow continues here to the jewelry and the shadows quite often they connect so it might be like that here as well a couple of hair strands I would like here to just go along with this silhouette just a couple of and they also go around the face a little she has like these loose hairs in here Thank you. 
golden hair on the other side too. Just a couple of them. And this part is also not dark enough so let's do one more layer in this area and also connect the shadow to the jewelry in here what's wrong with that I feel like it looks a little more dynamic to otherwise quite static piece little bits of splatters here quite here just gonna fix it with a little bit of the red now have to add to the other side as well it would probably be a good idea to cover the face while I do this now I'm gonna dry this and the last part will be golden embellishments and I want to do a little bit of the pencils to emphasize texture, some colors here and there, and then white highlights to the eyes. So now the embellishment with the iridescent Aztec gold. This is the paint that I'm going to use for the darker golden parts. Another tube overflowing with paint. But I have to say that these iridescent paints by Daniel Smith, they do have problems with re-wetting once they dry on your palette, which is why I'm not happy that the paint flows out of that tube this much. Probably if I don't use it this right away, then probably it will be harder to use it after I try to re-wet it. Well, most of the times I prefer to use for golden embellishments the Fintech watercolors, the handmade watercolors by Fintech. They are sold in pens, but they are super easy to re-wet. They are metallic, very high quality. But I want to use these. This one is stronger than the sandstone that we used before. And I want to do the embellishments of these metallic earrings and the, the rest of the jewelry. I'm gonna just improvise here because the reference picture doesn't show me exact details of these earrings, for example. So I'm just gonna do a few dots here and there. This has sort of a cap, from what I can tell. And then the bottom part with something sticking out of it. Similar thing on the other side. I think it looks neat. Now, there is a golden embellishment on this part of the collar. I'm just gonna try to paint it. I 
and we'll differentiate them later on with probably with colored pencils these things that we sketched the buttons or whatever that is is also for the most part golden so I'm just gonna paint that too with this color pattern has been part of the blouse or something not quite sure but it has this upper and bottom part been more golden embellished this part of the decor as well Here I'm just gonna do some random marks just to give it a little bit more of the texture but it's not an, the most important part. We do still have some of the golden embellishments on the jewelry but I think this gold, this other gold is quite dark and I don't like to have everything embellished with it. I think I'm gonna continue with the sandstone for the jewels. It's gonna be probably better. It's softer, it's not so aggressive gold. And I'm even gonna water it down so that it's not as reflective. And let's paint it now. Just like this. gonna do the exact details like on the reference just like hints of them and then there are these between the jewels or whatever that is I think that's it. I'm gonna dry this and we'll grab my white gouache for some of the face details. I picked a few colored pencils now and I'm gonna just try to add some texture and with the darker one that's sharpened, I'm going to try to put some of these darker definitions to the clothes. So I could do this with the brush but it would take longer and my time in the studio is coming to an end today. So I'm just gonna be more quickly done. And since this is a sketchbook, it is good, I think, to test out colored pencils as well because you're probably gonna be experimenting doing maybe some mixed media in this one. With colored pencils it is quick and easy and also you can erase it 
if you feel like you messed it up and you want to change the color or something Here I wanted to add hints of purple here and there just like to create some more color options and pops of color here and there maybe in some red more of the red pop in here but I didn't want to completely like fixate on that part The red is kind of brilliant even if it stays just like pure watercolor but if you feel like there is not enough color and if you want the saturated red for example colored pencils can be a good option it doesn't even show because the pyro red is so vibrant even without the color pencils but I want to use the darker pencil, this is darker brown, just to do these darker separations between these jewelry parts. But most importantly, the face. Yeah, playing around with this pattern, but the face is very important. And maybe just a hint of contrast. Wouldn't hurt. And usually the corner of the, the eye, there is a pop of light in that area. I also wanted to do just a hint of red texture to the cheek, because that was the part that was important. We did a lot with this alizarin crimson, but Still, if you feel like there is some color missing, this is how you add. Yeah, I could play with colored pencils for ages. Just could do patterns and everything. I have blue ones, turquoise ones. I think I could do the higher level of finish with these, like more details, but that's not the point today. And I sadly don't have enough time to play around with these for too long. 
So I'm just gonna put this aside. Maybe one last hit of the turquoise with pencil uh, to these earrings. They were more important than other parts. And the turquoise watercolor, since it is quite light, it wouldn't stay turquoise like this. So the colored pencil in this case is necessary. Last thing that I'm gonna do is the white gouache that I'm gonna just apply inside the eyes and then I'm done. I'm using Winsor & Newton designer's gouache and I'm also using Schminky designer's gouache. I find them very similar and the Schminky one is harder to get probably, but they both are quite opaque, they do a good job. Just gonna do the white highlight carefully. more is needed. Here maybe. And okay, let's do a few more pops of light. This. Oh, that's it. We actually had a pop of light on the cheek, this part. And so this is it, this is my sketch and reflective colors. I enjoyed working in this sketchbook for the first time and it's great because right now I'm using Strathmore sketchbook that is similar size, slightly bigger and that one contains cellulose paper. I like to work in that one also despite of the student grade paper and since these are sketches it doesn't really matter to me that paper is very high quality but if I compare the price this one is probably twice as much as that one but it contains 100% cotton paper so your practice is a little more similar to how you painting finished pieces to the cotton paper. And I have to say that since it's well binded, it really lays flat. And that's a huge issue with some sketchbooks that you can't quite open them and it makes it very uncomfortable to work in. This one is not the type of sketchbook that it would be hard to work in. However, this is my first painting. The paper is not a surprise for me because as I mentioned in the previous part, I work with Fabriano often. I noticed that they have sketchbooks on their site in different colors. The binding is different, but also with different types of paper. You can pick the ones with Archie's paper, with Saunders and Fabriano as well. So I might use the one with Archie's paper sometime in the future. Overall, this was a nice experience. And since I'm only about five pages left on my Strathmore sketchbook, then this is the sketchbook that I'm gonna continue using. I love that I will send this sketchbook and thank you very much, Tom, one more time. And you will see it in my future videos as I use it. It will take me at least a year to fill this sketchbook up with sketches like this one. I hope that you enjoyed this painting session, hope that you learned something from it. I think I might have been quite rushed this time around. I wanted to do a quick sketch and I just had a very precise window of time when I had to finish it and if I didn't then I probably would have played with all these jewels and details for about two more hours. It is better to do a messy sketch than no sketch at all. Just remember you don't have to paint great things in your sketchbook. This is a ground for experiments. You can be free in your sketchbook, trust me. The more you do, the better you get. And there will be good days, there will be bad days. There is no such thing as a perfect sketchbook filled with great works. The way I see it, my sketchbook is for practice. This was great practice. I'm just gonna probably look at it with a fresh view tomorrow and we'll see a hundred mistakes that you might see on the video right now. But I'm so glad that I did this. My goal actually for this year was to do a one watercolor sketchbook session like this one 
every single week and I'm failing at that so I'm very happy that I had an opportunity to realize this and do this with you in real time please let me know down below in the comments if you enjoy the real-time sessions as a YouTube video or if you'd like me to do live streams or more real times I do real-time patreon sessions like this one and in the very near future I want to figure out how to live stream these things with you either like through discord or even here on YouTube I'm gonna just prepare a proper setup and a good time for live stream that will work for me and you apart from really enjoying making seven to ten minute long YouTube videos for you this was fun also and I will see you in the future video very soon so have a great Great week have a great day do some sketches let me know if my session helped you if you sketched along and tag me on Instagram if you create something similar so I can see it maybe repost your work in my stories bye